Today's video is all about sides. Now, don't get me wrong, the classics are always delicious, but sometimes you just wanna change things up a little bit. Hey y'all, I'm Valerie, and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm sharing seven new to me side dish recipes that you have got to try. Okay, y'all, let's get started. We were really impressed by this boars and cheese pasta. And I'm going to make this in a 9 by 13 baking dish, and mine is a large one. I started out by adding 8 ounces of sliced mushrooms, along with 1 pint of cherry tomatoes, and about 2 teaspoons of minced garlic. Then on top of all that, I drizzled over about a fourth of a cup of olive oil. Then you're gonna season it with salt and pepper to taste and give all that a really good stir. Then we're gonna push all that to the outsides of the baking dish there, kind of make a little hole in the center. Then we're gonna add one round block of borzen garlic and herb cheese. And that's what's gonna take this to a whole new level. Oh, and I also sprinkled over a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes, but you can totally leave that out if you want to. Then you're gonna bake that at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes until those cherry tomatoes start to burst, those mushrooms are roasted, and that cheese is melted. And while that's in the oven, I'm boiling up 12 ounces of rotini pasta according to the box directions until al dente. All those veggies were done, so I grabbed that baking dish out of the oven. Then I added in a couple handfuls of fresh spinach. And you wanna add this in immediately while everything is still really hot. That way that spinach can wilt down. Next, you're gonna add in that cooked and drained pasta, along with 1 4 cup of Parmesan cheese. Now give all that a really good stir until it's all well combined. And I did reserve some of that pasta water just in case I needed it, and I did. So I added about a fourth of a cup of that here. You just add what you need until it's nice and creamy. This was absolutely delicious. It's something a little different than we would normally have, but everyone loved it. And this was one that my daddy had sent me and asked me to make, and I'm so glad he did. It was amazing. And feel free to make this your own and add any seasonings you think would be good in it. And this will absolutely be on our table for Christmas dinner. It was that good. I have never tried scalloped corn until now, and it is a new favorite. And to make it in a large bowl, we're gonna add in two cans of cream corn, along with one can of drained whole kernel corn. Now we're gonna season this with salt and pepper to taste, but I did a fourth of a teaspoon of salt and a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper, and one tablespoon of minced onion. Then you're gonna add in two beaten eggs, about a fourth of a cup of Parmesan cheese, and one cup of mozzarella cheese. And the recipe called for a half of a cup of crushed Ritz crackers, so I ended up doing about a half of a sleeve. Now you're going to melt down one stick of butter, but right now we're only going to add in half. So that is one fourth cup of melted butter you're going to add in now. Now give that a really good mix and then set it aside. We're going to make up a Ritz cracker topping. I added in the other half of that sleeve of crushed Ritz crackers along with the rest of that melted butter. I gave it a good stir and then set it aside so we can put all this together. The recipe said to use a nine by seven baking dish for this, but I'm using an eight by eight. It worked out just fine. You're gonna pour in that scalloped corn mixture and then kind of spread it out into an even layer. Now we're gonna add on the topping. But I felt like that topping needed a little more Ritz crackers. It was a little too much butter to cracker ratio for me. So I added in probably another half of a sleeve. So I'd say use a half of a sleeve for inside the scalloped corn and then one sleeve for on top. I spread out that topping and then baked this at 375 for 35 to 45 minutes. 
That top was golden brown and it was bubbly around the edges. I had made some turkey and gravy in the crock pot on this night and some brown sugar green beans, so this scalloped corn went along perfect with dinner. This was really so good, and honestly, I liked it a whole lot better than the regular corn casserole where you mix it with the Jiffy Mix. This was delicious, and we all loved it. I had seen this sweet potato casserole, and it had a couple things in it that I don't normally use in mine, so I was so excited to try it. To begin, I'm adding in two very well-drained 29-ounce cans of sweet potatoes, or yams, I guess if you want to call it. You do want to make sure they're drained very, very well. And my potato masher was dirty, so I grabbed this, and it worked out kind of okay. <laughs> Just mash them as good as you can. And I added 1 4 teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of cinnamon. We're also adding in half a stick of melted butter along with two eggs. And don't fuss at me for breaking them into the bowl there. I was in a little bit of a hurry. I also added in one teaspoon of vanilla there and half a cup of granulated sugar. Then drizzle in about three tablespoons of heavy cream. Now we can use the electric mixer to mix this until it's well combined. And you can mix it till you get it as smooth as you like it. I'm using a 9 by 13 to make this in. And you do want to spray it with nonstick spray, but I did not. I guess I was just a little excited for this casserole. I just poured in that sweet potato filling and then spread it out into an even layer. Then I pushed it to the side and we're going to make up the topping. And this is what I was interested about. You're going to add in about a third of a cup of crushed honey graham crackers along with half a cup of chopped pecans and about one cup of packed brown sugar. You're going to give this a quick little mix before we add in the butter. Now I'm adding in one stick of melted butter. Now the recipe said softened, but mine was not softened and I ended up microwaving mine and it ended up completely melted and it turned out just fine. Just stir that up and now we can add it to the top of the casserole. By the way, do y'all prefer this kind of topping for your sweet potato casserole or do you prefer a marshmallow topping? You know, I have never ever had a sweet potato casserole with marshmallows and I guess I'm going to have to try it one day. But I'll tell you one thing, I loved the topping for this. You're going to spread it out into an even layer. Now this is going into the oven to bake at 350 for 30 to 35 minutes or until that filling is hot and that top is crisp and lightly golden brown. This was so good. We all loved it. My husband wore it out. And actually, he said it was so good, it'll make you want to slap your mama. And yes, he says that when he really loves something. Have y'all ever heard that expression? I don't know. It's a southern thing, maybe. But you know, we really do have some funny sayings. I've seen this steakhouse creamed spinach on TikTok, and I thought I'd give it a try. In a large skillet, I added in four tablespoons of butter, along with half a diced onion. And if you want to, you can dice that up a little finer. And I just sauteed that until that onion was tender. I've got two 10 ounce bags of baby spinach here. And if you want to, you feel free to pick all those stems off. I did not though. I did, however, give that spinach a kind of a rough little chop. And that is a lot of spinach. But what you're gonna do is fill up that skillet and then toss it around and saute it a little bit until it starts to wilt. And that'll make room for more. And then you add more in and keep doing that until you've added in all your spinach. And you see how all that spinach wilted down to that little. I made a little hole there in the middle and added in two teaspoons of minced garlic. I let that cook for about 30 seconds or so, just until that garlic becomes fragrant. Then I added in eight ounces of softened cream cheese. And for the seasonings, I did three-fourths teaspoon of salt, a little pepper, 
and a pinch of nutmeg. And you're also going to add in a fourth of a cup of heavy cream. Then give that a stir until all that cream cheese is melted down and well combined. And next, I sprinkled in a half a cup each of shredded Parmesan and shredded mozzarella. And you're going to stir this and let it continue to cook on low until that cheese is completely melted. Now you could serve it up just like this, but I'm going to take it up a notch. I'm removing it from the heat and heading over to the counter with it. I'm using a 9 by 9 inch baking dish here. I'm pouring in that creamed spinach mixture. And you're going to spread it out in there kind of evenly. And we're going to top it with a little more cheese. I did a little handful of Parmesan and about 3 fourths to 1 cup of shredded mozzarella cheese. Oh, and feel free to use however much or any cheese you like here. I put this in the oven to bake at 350 for about 15 minutes. Then I cut the broiler on the last minute or so to get that top golden brown. This was delicious. It was creamy. It had a lot of flavor. Oh, and feel free to change out that fresh spinach for the frozen kind if that's what you have on hand. I will say though, if you use the frozen kind, make sure you let it thaw out and then completely drain it. Squeeze as much of that water out as you can. And y'all don't sleep on this because it was amazing. This yum yum green bean casserole makes the perfect side dish to go along with any holiday dinner or family get together. And it comes together quick. In a large bowl, you're going to add in one can of cream of mushroom soup along with one cup of sour cream. I'm adding two cups of shredded cheese and I'm using a combination of cheddar and mozzarella. And for the seasonings, I'm doing a fourth of a teaspoon each of onion powder, garlic powder, and pepper. Now we're going to give this a quick little stir to get it combined before we add in the rest. Now the recipe called for 32 ounces of frozen but thawed green beans, but instead I used four cans of green beans. Drained of course, and I actually prefer the canned green beans over the frozen. Now we're going to mix this up until it's well combined. You want to make sure all those green beans are completely covered in that mixture. You're going to need a 9 by 13 baking dish for this and you're just going to pour everything in there. And nope, I wasn't wasting any of that. And after you get it all in there, you're just going to spread it out into an even layer. Now we're about to make a topping for this. You can use any kind of store-bought stuffing mix you prefer, but I'm using one six ounce box of the chicken stuffing mix. And you're just gonna sprinkle that dry stuffing mix evenly on top of everything. I've got three fourths cup of chicken broth in my measuring cup here, and to that I added four tablespoons of melted butter. You're gonna stir that up and evenly drizzle it over the top of that casserole. Just try to get that stuffing mix good and covered. Now this is going into the oven to bake uncovered at 350 for 40 to 45 minutes. Now, if you feel like that top is getting a little too brown, a little too early on, you can throw a piece of foil over it. This was really good. We loved that stuffing mix on top and I'll definitely be making it again. And I love that it only took me like 10 minutes to throw together. And this is also a really good one you can make ahead. Just go ahead and assemble it all and throw it in the refrigerator and then leave it there until you're ready to bake it. These creamy mashed potatoes were Lacey's favorite. I used five pounds of russet potatoes. I washed them, peeled them, diced them into small cubes, then boiled them until they were fork tender. I poured them into a strainer so they could completely drain, 
Then I returned that pot to the stove top. And I added in 3 fourths cup of melted butter, 6 ounces of softened cream cheese. And for the seasonings, I did 1 and a half teaspoons of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I gave this a quick little stir before I added those potatoes back in. And be careful when you add those back in to make sure that stuff don't splash all over the place. I did turn my heat off, by the way. And I got my potato masher out and mashed, mashed, mashed. Now, after you get those good and mashed, you're going to add in three-fourths cup of half and half. I didn't have that, so I ended up adding half heavy cream and half milk. Then I mashed it a little more to get that milk good and mixed in there. Now we're heading over to the counter with it. And this is not quite a 9 by 13 here. I love it, though, because my Mima got it for me. Um, but you can also use a 9x13. That'll work fine too. You're going to pour in those creamy mashed potatoes and spread them out. And to finish it off, I sliced up about a half of a stick of butter into little tabs and I added it evenly on top of everything. Then I placed this into the oven to bake at 350 until that butter was melted and those potatoes were completely warmed through. These are simple, but they are delicious. And besides, you can't have a holiday dinner without some kind of potatoes. And I don't know about your family, but my family loves potatoes. Oh, and I did sprinkle the top with a little parsley just to make it look a little fancy. And I know this is a lot of butter and a lot of cream cheese, but listen, this is for a holiday or a special occasion, not something you eat every single day. It is absolutely delicious. I think you're gonna love it and I really hope you give it a try. These cheesy garlic butter Hawaiian rolls are a great way to doctor up some regular rolls. First, we're gonna make up a little butter mixture to pour over the top. I've got one stick of melted butter in a measuring cup here. I added a little garlic salt, one teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and two teaspoons of minced garlic. I also added about two tablespoons of the grated Parmesan cheese. Give that a stir and then set it aside. I'm using some of the savory butter Hawaiian rolls we actually had leftover from Thanksgiving. I'm only using 12 of them, and I placed them in a seven by 11 inch baking dish that I sprayed with nonstick spray, but you can put them in anything they'll fit in. Now we're gonna make two cuts down the center of each of these rolls. Don't cut all the way to the bottom though, only about two thirds of the way down. And we're doing this because we're gonna stuff them with cheese. And you're gonna need about a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese. I shredded this myself and I shredded it very fine. And then you're just gonna take however much cheese you can stuff in those cuts there, just stuff them full. And feel free to use any cheese you like here or anything you have on hand. As long as you think it'll be good in here. Okay, I've got them completely stuffed with cheese now I'm taking that butter Parmesan cheese mixture that we made up earlier and you're just going to spoon it all over the top and then I took the back of my spoon and just kind of spread it out. You just want to make sure it's covering everything. Now these are going into the oven to bake at 350 for 10 to 12 minutes. I let mine cook until that cheese was melted and the top was starting to get golden brown. These were absolutely amazing. And I will tell you, I have already tried this with the regular sweet Hawaiian rolls and I didn't care for them. But my daddy had brought these savory Hawaiian rolls for Thanksgiving and he brought a lot. So we had some left over and I thought this would be perfect to use this up with. These were cheesy and that garlic butter just took them to a whole nother level. And I'm telling you, everyone is going to love these if you bring them to a holiday dinner or 
They're also good to have any night of the week. But I will tell you, if you bring them, no one's going to really want the regular plain rolls anymore. These are so good. A new favorite of mine for sure. I really hope you enjoyed this video. You may also like these. Don't forget to subscribe down below for more easy recipes. Oh, and I want to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. I love you all, and I will see you in my next video.